And welcome back to Southern Virginia University Knights Arena on the Knights Broadcasting. We are here for the third match of this triple header afternoon here at Knights Arena in Buena Vista, Virginia. One of the most uh, beautiful upcoming, hopefully, spring afternoons that we've had in uh, the last couple months. Hopefully, you got a chance to get out, get your break if you needed it, and are back joining us for this match. The probably most competitive match that we'll see of the afternoon, the Mount St. Joseph University Lions come in off of their win against Immaculata University Mighty Max, the Knights having beat the Max in the first game of the afternoon. The Knights come in starting uh, a very different lineup than they had uh, against Immaculata. This lineup will be more of a, a traditional starting lineup for the Knights that they've had throughout the last uh, month or so. Knights coming in off of uh, two solid wins against Lancaster Bible and Marymount. The Lions starting us off with a uh, serve and free ball from the Knights. Knights now jousting in the net is Tangaloa. The back row hit from Rockabaron. And now the Knights will get an opportunity to transition. Rockabaron from the back line. Takes that right-handed swing. I am Scotty Winterton, joined by my colleague, Skylar Johnson. And we know that when you see Noel Rockabaron take off from the back line and swing like that, the good things are going to happen. Yeah, he's absolutely athletic from that back row right there. Jumps left, sends it right. And uh, gets it down for the first point. Good to be with you, Scotty. Yeah, good to have you. It's uh, been uh, a, a struggle without you, Skyler, my ever faithful companion. Very knowledgeable about the uh, basketball, or sorry, the uh, volleyball team. Um, been around these guys for a long time. Uh, friends with a lot of them. He'll bring some real valuable insights. And this is going to be an interesting opportunity for the Knights. Um, and just in terms of, of kind of overall athleticism, um, maybe it's just even the depth. You know, when you look at uh, the two subs that, that the Lions bring in versus this sideline of the Knights, which I don't know, what is it, maybe uh, 10 guys strong, maybe 12 on the sideline for the Knights. Um, just that alone, Skyler, might uh, make it a, a little bit daunting opportunity uh, for the Lions, and then you see that kind of athleticism yeah absolutely you you mentioned it at the start more of the starting lineups here for the knights uh interesting to see how long uh, the starters get in we talk about the depth that the knights have and uh these you know these little tournaments here at the barney's great uh, you know opportunities for these younger guys to get a lot of looks and see who can uh you know contribute to this knights team this year who's you know looking to go on a you know extensive run you know as they did last year yeah and then you see ray sanchez uh Really did a lot in the first game in the match against Immaculata. Does a nice job hitting down line. And that uh, runner from the new knight from Brazil, Cristo. Cristo is really kind of fitting in with the team. It's going to take a while when you come from another country. He missed on the first one, and then Tangaloa goes right back to him. He's a heck of an athlete, uh, just kind of getting used to the the way that it, the volleyball's played here in the NCAA. Yeah, that was a great, you know, obvious effort to get him the ball real quick right back in another attempt, and uh, we saw a great kill right there. Kaipo sends that one just over the line. A couple missed serves for the Knights here. All tied up. Mount St. Joseph putting the ball in. And it'll be a point for the Knights. Um, on serve there, you saw that was uh, Jason Hasher. Jason in the kind of their do-it-all player for the, uh, for the Lions. A uh, little hurt, a little banged up. So they'll rely on, on Eli Scott and a couple other players to really come in and, and take over, do more of the work. Hayden Wood, number six, from the opposite side. 
Uh, you'll see Rach uh, Sanchez from the outside getting a little more work than they might otherwise get. And now Nawell on serve, puts it to Hasher. And nice cut shot, not a lot of pace on it, but really smart placement from Hasher. We'll see a lot of uh, work from Carmesino, the freshman setter. He was really impressive in the game against the Mighty Max. Not the tallest of players, but does a lot of work. He, he's really great around the net, great footwork. Yeah, the chemistry right there between Kaipo and Nawell on point. Kaipo sends that one way too fast. Nobody's stopping that two-point lead here for the Knights. Cristo Puente, freshman 6'4", as I mentioned, from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Gets it in. Hasher with a great pass. Timing off with Wood on the set. And then up and strong. That's Bullhauer finishing the block. Yeah, great defensive stand right there from Bullhauer. Stand strong. Sends it one right back. Yeah, 18 blocks on the season. The leading block getter for the, the Lions. And he had a couple of those in the first game uh, match against Immaculata. Uh, I, I think more than he would want. He's a freshman and a uh, really bright future, but uh, the serving kind of uh, betrayed him in that first uh, match, and hopefully he can get that turned around. They're going to need to have very few serving errors to stay uh, with these Knights who put a lot of pressure on teams with their serve. They do miss a couple players that have left. Um, in particular, Jothan Castillo for the Knights, 123 digs. Uh, on the season, 2.2%. There really isn't anybody on the night so far that has um, been able to step up and get to that two digs per set place. Uh, it's really been a shared, the joust at the net as Candlin goes down. Great job at the net. And <laughs> smack talk between the, uh, the, the, the smack talk for the Knights always comes from their bench to the other teams on court. <laughs> Because the Knights bench is usually uh, bigger than... You see that uh, Tyler Schaefer's checked in for Tungaloa. Rocka Baron will put that ball into Schaefer. And then Schaefer will go right back to him. Eli Scott on the block. Not able to get the ball down. It goes out of bounds. And we have uh, Trey Libero for Libero. As uh, the Knights will bring in Jeffrey Tomlinson. Uh, taking out um, uh, Justin Madsen. Nice job. That time, How Hasher going up strong and finishing. You yeah. see why he's the lead. But you see him kind of grabbing. Look, right now he's kind of bent over, grabbing his back. He's just not 100% right now. And I'd love to see him at 100% because he's a really good volleyball player. Yeah, absolutely. That was you know an impressive shot right there. And maybe a little miscommunication by the Knights on who was going to go for that. We see not well go for the kill right there. But uh, it's a great play for sure by Schaefer. Sanchez does a good job on the dig, and then that shot from Baldwin off the block. I believe that's the call. Are they going to say, yeah, it was a, a touch. Baldwin with an incredible 917 hitting percentage in the first uh, match this, this morning. 11 kills, no errors. Nice job going line. Sanchez figuring prominently early on in the offense for the Lions. And checking in for the Lions, Bullhauer for Libero, Josh Cable. Josh Cable also, uh, he'll, he spent some time, uh, that one sails long from Eli Scott, spent some time without the white jersey on in the, second, in the first uh, match against Immaculata. Really can play outside, very versatile player. And Cable puts that one back up. Rock Baron jousting at the net with Bullhauer and the 
experience and athleticism of Rock Better and wins out on that. The Lions are also missing their top um, man on the on the defense in terms of digs as uh, Craig Danamiller. We haven't seen him playing. I think he's uh, in, in street clothes on the side, and again, that only puts him with two subs. Knights up 14-9 as Tungaloa on the serve. Just misses, hits the bottom of the top tape. And we'll reset as Hasher back for his second opportunity to serve in this first set. And the quick to Cristo Puente, nice timing. Nobody there on the block for the Lions. Let's Cristo put that ball down nice and easy. Yeah, you mentioned the athleticism of Cristo. So much speed behind that jump right there. He, you know, made contact, you know, ridiculously fast. And that's hard to defend. And, you know, great play right there from Cristo. And with their own quick, right back at it, Carma, Carmasino finds the freshman Bullhauer up close. No Knights there on the block. Knights got to figure out the timing and read that uh, set from Carmesino, but he's really tricky with it, and Sanchez puts his serve into the net. So far, the Knights hitting 500 and uh, 188 for Mount St. Joseph's. Both teams with three serving errors. Puente Miss hits, puts the ball long. Not a lot of top spin on that ball. If you're going to put that amount of pace on it, you're going to have to get the top spin, and he just miss hit. And Bullhauer will go back now. Bullhauer has uh, two aces on the year, 14 serving errors. Gets that one over, but the power of the Knights on full display. Yeah, Canlon put some sauce behind that one, sent that one in with, as you said, a lot of power. The The strength of Canlon is, is obvious when he plays. Yeah, Canlon, recent father, a beautiful baby, had a chance to see her, fantastic, married to Kelly Canlon. Brother Sam was a big part of this team's run to the Final Four last year, is now on a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Knights definitely missed Sam Candlin's 150 kills. He averaged 2.83 kills per set, which was second in the team on the team, hitting 284. Definitely missed that. So how are they replacing that firepower? And also Mark Stapley, who had 97 kills uh, and hit 312 on the season. How are the Knights replacing some of that offense? Well, it's definitely tough to replace, you know, those, you know, awesome athletes that you mentioned. I think a lot of young talent uh, on this night squad, and we mentioned it earlier that these tournament games are, you know, great opportunities uh, for these younger guys. We brought back a lot, you know, Nawel uh, back as well as Kaipo, you know, the, the chemistry there will pay dividends. I think that it's going to be just about, you know, rounding it out and uh, a couple people stepping up. The, the height of McKay Walker on defense could definitely – uh, you know, pay, uh, pay off, you know, later on. And I'm excited to see, you know, what this night team t can do. Kyler Evans is second on the team uh, behind Nawel. We haven't seen him so far. He was in the first game, um, but he has 94 total attacks on the year, which is far behind the 181 that Nawel Rockabaran brings. But he's hitting 255 as a freshman, 6'8". Brings a lot of firepower. I think he'll be the next kind of real big star for the Knights. Um, also, Cristo has an opportunity to step in. Puente, um, international player, very athletic, fighting a couple injuries, lower leg injuries he's, he's working through. Talked to um, Coach Baker about him, and he, he says he just, you know, he's such an athlete, but he also moves around a lot, and and kind of, uh, you know, all over. And, and, and it's interesting, volleyball, it's a, such a small, compact space that you really have to be disciplined in, in knowing where your space is. And, and he's, he's working through that. He'll learn it. You'll notice. You'll find him quickly. Just look for those uh, lime green laces on his shoes. Easy to find and pick out Cristo. Um, definitely uh, a fun player to watch. His mom, Karina, back home in Sao Paulo, 
Aunt uh, Anna Claudia, Maria Emilia, his Uncle Alan, Grandma Manuela. They're all home watching such a great opportunity with the stream to have your families, no matter where you're from, be able to watch these games. Sanchez is able to put that ball over. And the set from McKay Walker uh, from, and the hit, I think it was from Baldwin, just not able to get it quite down the line. Walker looking for his uh, set assist, doesn't come up with it. Tyler Schaefer still in uh, setting for the Knights. That over ball not what the Knights are looking for. Justin Madsen, the freshman from Las Vegas, not able to control that serve. Great job from Hayden Wood. Yeah, it was a great heads up play um, over there from Mount St. Joseph's to, to see that one coming and get that one down quick. Within five here as the Knights lead 2015. This is our first time we've seen McKee Walker. He didn't play in the Liberty um, exhibition match. California native, transfer from BYU-Idaho. The quick from Schaefer to Puente. Great dig. They're going to call a violation on Hasher. The Knights put six, their sixth point um, above the Lions, that six-point deficit in rally scoring, difficult to overcome. And the serve in the net will help out a lot as that closes the gap to five. And Eli, Eli Scott, excellent server, back for the Lions. Scott with three aces on the year, only eight serving errors. Noel with the roll shot, the pancake puts it up. Ball still alive. Christian Schaefer to brother. And then Howell says, look, if you can get the first pancake, that's the only breakfast you're going to get. I'm done. Here's the bacon. We're out. Yeah, what a dive right there from Ray Sanchez to keep it going. But the Knights set another one up for Nawell, and Nawell sends it down. Yeah. If you're a Knights fan and you've seen, you know, you're used to seeing Nawell send those, you know, from uh, both sides of the floor, in the middle, from the back row, anywhere, Nawell's, you know, quite the hitter. And Tagaloa with his second serving uh, service error. In as many attempts, still uh, keeping the Lions in this. Hasher back to serve. And he returns the favor. The volleyball gods giveth and the volleyball gods taketh away. Yeah, we're seeing a good amount of service errors. The Knights with six, and uh, I believe that was the fifth over there for the Lions. Uh, definitely got to you know, limit those going forward. But with the... You know, the speed and the power they put behind the serves, you know, every once in a while it seems to, you know, occur. So you see a great defensive play right there on the right side. There's Kyler Evans stepping in, the big man showing his skills, the freshman stepping up, roofing that hit, giving the Knights opportunity for a game point, set point with Nawell on serve, difficult spot for the Lions. Wow. Cable with a great get. And then, as I mentioned, the athleticism and the smart play of Carmesino. He goes up and puts that ball down. He's, just, he's only a freshman. And, he, like, we, we saw that kind of play throughout the Immaculata match. He's fantastic. Yeah, we've seen him, you know, dish out a couple of assists. I believe he has six on the day as the Knights end this first set with some authority right there. But, yeah, you, you said it. Carmesino has been playing, you know, pretty well throughout this day. The Knights get that first set there, 25-18. So hard to you know hard to rally back as uh, the Lions you know put up good effort a little bit there and Knights take that first set. Christian Schaefer from the outside attacking that ball with authority and violence decided to put the game away and made sure everybody knew who was going to win. The freshman from Palmyra, Pennsylvania, his brother Tyler, also uh, a junior here, a transfer from one of the Penn State uh, satellite campuses. Great family for volleyball, volleyball family. Father very involved in the volleyball world up in the Palmyra, Pennsylvania area. And it's interesting watching two very different players. Tyler 
is uh, you know more cerebral on the court. It's funny though. He, he'll he, he'll he has a couple classes where he, you know he gets dressed up. He looks just like a math teacher. Tyler walking around and great setter. Um, Christian a little bit more flamboyant. Uh, he's long. He's lean, and his arm is super whippy. And as you see right there, as he attacks that ball, he just you know he goes after it. Clearly, been on a lot of volleyball courts. It was awesome to see the freshman finish out that game. Yeah, I think the Knights over the last you know few years have had you know the ability to recruit and bring in a lot of you know talent from you know all over the country, and uh, you know that's you know part of the reason they've been able to have the success that they've had, and you know they build around talent and talent brings talent, and they've been able to practice together and you know build up the guys that have been here, and it's you know it's, it is great to see, and I think this season will be a huge payoff for a lot of the guys that have stuck around as you know as we've talked about. Yeah, and, and you know if we, if if the Knights can get Justin Madsen and and um, Jeffrey Tomlinson really working together, they're going to probably see around equal playing time. We're having to replace Jothan, um, who was just a staple, didn't didn't come out much. There certainly wasn't really a libero sub for him. And then uh, and and then getting Tanner Durkin. Tanner Durkin led the Knights in blocks last year, and he's coming off a lower leg injury. He got in for the first time last match. And it was great. Uh, his brother Sam Durkin uh, started and played most of the match at set it, setter. And really, uh, the connection was awesome. It was good to see them. I'm sure um, family back home, Leo, Mom Deborah, Dad Leo, like enjoying seeing that connection. Uh, Mom may have uh, let Sam know that if he didn't feed Tanner over and over again, I don't know, they were going to take the credit card away or something. Because they, they did a great job connecting. But they need... Durkin back. They need Tanner back in the middle. He was so good at blocks. The combination with him and McKay is fantastic. When you throw in the, the new 6'8", Kyler Evans, that's a great front line for the Knights. Now the athleticism of Cristo Puente um, uh, along with Rocco Barron and the kind of stability that Tangaloa brings and then Schaefer um, subbing in allows the Knights to run a lot of different systems and a lot of different kinds of offenses. And, and I think we'll see some more varied stuff. We're seeing already more back line stuff than we've ever seen from the Knights. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's definitely a deliberate attempt from the coaching staff to, you know, to try to mix it up and get, get kids out of their comfort zones and, uh, you know, try to build people up and, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do, and you know, with you know the high quality athletes that have you know been playing volleyball for, you know, years, and it's just about rounding them out as you know as team members and getting them to you know execute together, and uh, you know, looking forward to the second match. The Mount St. Joseph Lions stem from Ohio, and and they play in that Midwestern area, the Heartland Conference. And there's Kyler Evans getting that, uh, his first opportunity to serve in. And then the block coming from the freshman comes on over. Uh, he goes up to the senior, Nawel, and uh, kind of like, hey, uh, look how well I did. Look at me. I'm really good. And Nawel laughing. And, and he is, man. That's, that's great stuff out of the young guy. Good stuff from Cable. Joust at the, the net. The quick to McKay. That was awesome because that was off of a joust, then quickly to Tungaloa and right away to McKay. That, that chemistry and that quick and the opportunity for McKay to get ready, that footwork is really improved footwork out of McKay Walker. Someday I hope, oh, nice pancake up and Walker puts it over. Great job from the back line from Evans. And then another one right at Hasher. Someday I hope to get out to uh, the uh, Walker family home and do some lobster fishing with uh, McKay Walker's uh, lobster. Uh, it's not lobster fishing, like going, you know, getting after the lobster, uh, trapping him uh, with his dad. Uh, really, a uh, I man that's spent a lot of time out in the ocean and former uh, police officer. McKay is incredible, one of the married um, players on the team. The Knights have a few of those. The only one daddy uh, for, for Paul and that beautiful baby. 
Walker again. Oh, and that's still up. Still a great defense from the Lions, keeping it alive. Back line from Rockabaron. And Cable and Sanchez couldn't team up to keep that ball in the air. Yeah, that's a great play right there from Kaipo. Back to back, McKay gets two, you know, kills. I believe that his makes it three for today. And then that third one, um, electing to go away from McKay and gets not well open for his seventh kill of, uh, of the day. Another service error for the Knights. Yeah, that'll be, you know, so the Knights right now, it, service errors can happen if you're getting aces with them. That's one ace, seven serving errors. Um, so that's, you know, the, the Lions are kind of keeping pace. They had five serving errors. They're going to call a violation on that set from Kaipo. And Wood will go back to serve a second time. Hayden Wood, the graduate student from Cincinnati, Ohio. Give the Knights a point off of that service error. Knights, as I said, eight service errors. That's the sixth. Oh, and Wood shanks that one off his right forearm. The ace for McKay Walker. That one making Mama proud back home. Great set from Carmesino, and then the finish from Scott on the right side. Great job seeing line. Line was wide open, turned his shoulders, opened up, hit that perfectly down the line, tucked it in about two inches inside the line. We had a great view of that. Scott, one of the better servers on this Lions team. Kaipo goes opposite, finding Evans. The block, the up, and then the middle. Great job. Getting that ball up was Madsen, but the Knights can't take advantage. Yeah, I got a little rally back and forth there. Just can't get it over was Evans on the end there. Looks a little frustrated there, but definitely good little play there. Just can't get the, you know, the ending there as we see a... Big hit off the side right there from Noel. Wood puts it back over. And then Christo turns and goes all the way across his body. Very athletic play. Difficult to do as Carmesino does his ninja up. I'm not sure there's anything athletically that. I'm, I mean, I would like to see that guy out there with, uh, you know, going after a football, running routes with you, Skyler. He is a, just a great athlete. Yeah, and leading, you know, his team right now in assists, I believe leading all in assists with the seven that he has on the day. Christian Schaefer mishit that ball, trying to keep the Knights' transition play going. Couldn't do that. Kaipo goes outside. Evans in that rotation, hitting outside, able to get the kill. Yeah, you really like the strength of Kyler Evans. I believe just a freshman. Yep. But uh, you know, plays you know, plays above the net and has a lot of power when he hits. You know, it's impressive to watch. Big serve from Rockabaron, handled block from Evans. Another opportunity, and this time, as Car Carmasino goes up, not able to get uh, the swing that he wanted on the early attack. Puts it into the net. Knights up by three. The Lions need to keep contact right here with the Knights. They need to side out. And they're going to call a foot fault on Rock Baron. Yeah, you don't see that every day from Rock Baron. Just gets caught up being a little bit too aggressive on the serve there. But uh, no big deal. Just need to wipe that off and keep moving. Sanchez off the tape. And... Opposite to Evans, Evans finishes. Little combo play from the Knights there as Tangaloa skips over the middle, goes to the outside, a little bit tight in terms of uh, towards the middle of the court, but Evans is able to adjust and gets the kill. Serving is Puente. 
That one looks like it was going to fall, and it does. That's what he was looking for on the first one. This time he gets it. We'll see if that can keep him going. As a freshman watching Cristo, you can see that he gets uh, you know, in his head every now and then. He's, uh, he plays with a lot of passion. It'll be important for him to learn how to manage the ups and the downs, not getting too high, not getting too low. And that one didn't have the top spin, curving to the left. Yeah, the Lions staying in this one, um, large part due to, you know, some of the errors that the Knights are making. And, uh, and, you know, part of that probably has to be, you know, to the aggression that the Knights are playing as we see a huge hit. Evans getting his third kill. This one off the, you know, the body of the, the Lion defender. But again, just the strength of, you know, all these outside hitters for the Knights is, you know, it's tough to, it's tough to handle, especially when you only have, you know, as we talked about earlier, the two subs that the Lions have and, the Knights are just moving through rotations right now. Now, Tyler Schaefer, another service error for the Knights. Maybe pushing just a little bit much on those, trying to get a little too much off of that. They've got the height and the athleticism to defend. They need to give their team an opportunity. That one's Candlin. Kind of an awkward play from Schaefer. Candlin didn't really look like he was ready for the attack. And Schaefer gave, put the ball up and then backed out of the way. Clipping off the tape. The quick to the middle of McKay. The timing was a little off. Ball still in the air. And Rocco Barron's able to get it over. Going off outside to Wood. Great job as Wood finishes strong. Hayden Wood, such a good hitter. Uh, Hayden Wood comes in hitting uh, with 50 kills uh, out on, on 132 attempts. Not great percentage, 129, but you can see the, the powers there. The Knights, of course, have that as well. You see that on full display with that finish. Candle back to serve. Kind of a free opportunity, and this time the timing between Schaefer and McKay Walker is much better. Candlin back serving again. Yeah, you love the way Schaefer's you know sharing the ball right now. He's got five assists with Kaipo on the on the bench. He's you know setting up these outside hitters incredibly well. Back to back great plays right there from Schaefer. Candlin only five service hours on the year, four aces. Um, very consistent in his serving. Rocka Baron goes up over the top of the block. Cable does a great job keeping it in, and Hasher will put it over for the Knights. Off the ceiling, and the block off of Baldwin's swing from hits Hasher, and Hasher walking around like, what am I supposed to do? It was weird because the Knights had to play off the ceiling, and the 15-11 to 11 score causes a timeout from Jake Neheisel. Jake Neheisel bringing strong shoe game. I don't know if the Knights, uh, if the camera will pick it up, but uh, he was the MCVL 2021 Coach of the Year. Really great coach along with his shoe game. You can see how he has these players. I mean, there's only eight active right now, and they're all fantastic. They're all really good players. So he's uh, definitely bringing a quality over quantity. Yeah, absolutely. It's his third season as the head coach over there. For the Lions last season, he led the Lions to a 12 and 4 record. You know, obviously, you mentioned winning that Coach of the Year award. Uh, you know, he played um, volleyball for the Lions, and you know, and came back, and you know, he's leading this program, and definitely, you know, on you know, in the right direction. And uh, uh, just uh, this Knights team, you know, pretty pretty tough, a lot of depth, and uh, only traveling, you know, uh, you know, a limited amount of players. It's got to be tough, but you know, great coach over there for the Lions. The Lions come in hitting uh, 207 as a team, and, and we're seeing that, that, that differential. The Knights are hitting 267 on the season, and right now the Knights are at a uh, .436 clip, uh, 
for the Lions. And we see that in the difference. The thing that's kept the, the Lions in, as you mentioned, is the Knights now with 11 uh, serving errors. Wood goes strong down the line. What a great set. Nice and high. Perfect placement from Carmesino. And then Wood able to get up high and strong on the timing to finish. Yeah, little to no time to react right there from Tomlinson as the ball, you know, nearly goes between his legs. But yeah, great, great hit and great, you know, assist. As I was about to mention, the Knights, you know, leading, you know, pretty uh, handily in assist. But what an assist right there to lead for the, you know, the first kill coming out of that break. And then Wood back gets another point now down just two, but puts that long. Kind of a killer moment. It looked like the the momentum was swinging. They were surging. And it's, it's such an interesting thing, this dynamic in volleyball about, you know, this, this service ace versus error. And, you know, how hard do you push? Man, great play, wrapping around. Eli Scott, Carmesino was going there the whole time. First time we've seen that out of Scott. We saw it a bunch in the first match um, between Immaculata and the Lions. Here they bring it out for the first time and, and the athleticism of Eli Scott on full display. Whoa, miss hit there. <laughs> he looks up. That one goes into the fans, and <laughs> Eli puts his hand up, says, my bad. I'm sorry. He's still over there on the sideline apologizing. <laughs> I don't know who. Some, somebody's mom in the stands just got targeted yeah, by Eli that's, Scott. That's timing right there, especially right after you talk about how, you know, these service errors, you know, happen, you know, surprisingly a lot for how talented these you know these athletes are but it's i think it's because the power that they put behind you know put behind it it has to be so precise you know like as we see right there a precise serve from Kaipo able to get his i believe his third service ace on the day maybe his second but uh yeah sometimes you know it just gets away from you right there as we see him sending into the crowd yeah that was his second ace and and what you know you, you, what you're trying to do is get the team out of system that nice hit uh, they're going to say uh, stayed in no tip um, great job from uh, number 10, Ryan Bullhauer. Yeah, uh, you know, you're trying to get the other team out of system. These teams are really good, and if you don't get them out of system, you're going to pay for it on the, the, the hit because the, the, the passes are going to be pretty precise and these setters and hitters are so strong that you really are pressing on that serve. And the thing is, sometimes you don't have to press so hard. If you have the advantage – in some of the athleticism, the height, you know, you can take advantage of that. And there, Carmesino tries to get sneaky and put it over. And the second time I've seen him try to do that and it doesn't quite get over the net, I'm sure as he goes through just a freshman, he'll get more accurate with that attack and he's going to be very dangerous. He already is, but I'm sure he'll hone that in. Rock Baron, Sanchez with a great up and then Bullhauer finishes the play. Great job from Bullhauer. He's fun to watch. The, also a freshman. Those two freshmen between um, Carmesino and Bullhauer, they have some really a really bright future. Hayden Woods, a graduate student. Jason Hasher is a graduate student. So they're going to lose some real offensive power in the near future. Um, but in the, it looks like there's some real um, bright spot next year. Still available with Eli Scott, only a junior. The Knights up by five. Cristo Puente, the service line. That one had uh, a little more top spin on it. It's like, you know, he's the, front, the, the last one he missed just couldn't get, the, get it to drop. This one dropping too much. Yeah, like like we talked about, it's just, you know, about finding the exact, you know, right spot. And they all want that perfect serve. And as we see another great serve right there, Nawal well just unable to handle it. Maybe a little miscommunication on who was going to go after that one right there. But, you know, these Lions just, you know, they won't go away. 18-21 here looking to rally and, you know, keep it close. Uh, but, yeah, the Knights just need to do, you know, a little bit better, be more deliberate about getting the ball over as we see another service error um, and, uh, you know, almost, you know, letting, letting the game play itself out and, you know, letting the other team make a mistake rather than make one, you know. Yeah, that's kind of a, a, an approach. Uh, I've, our, our tennis coach, Tom Snelson, a uh, really incredible tennis player, talks about that all the time, that his game was really about 
uh, allowing the other player to make mistakes and just keep fighting, stay in the match. And there, uh, uh, Scott not able to get that one over. Not sure if they're going to count that as a block um, from McKay. I'm not sure if it just hit the tape or McKay actually did get the block. But allowing the other team to make mistakes by just playing within yourself, putting some pressure on them, but which what Nawell always does with serves, as does uh, Schaefer with a great serve right there. Good job from them. I believe they called net right there on Schaefer. Maybe not. Yeah, definitely a violation call. Uh, Knights with a four-point lead. Carmesino back to serve. The left-hander unable to get that one over and puts the Knight at their second game point of the afternoon. It's interesting watching Carmesino when he gets that. I'm, I don't think I've ever seen somebody so fast as soon as the ref's whistle goes. He About a second and a half, and that ball is already in your face. And Paul Candelin with the ace to finish out game two. The Knights win 25-19. Putting themselves in an opportunity to sweep the Mount St. Joseph Lions. Uh, Three-minute break in between sets. We'll take about a minute and a half. We'll come back, talk about that second set and the numbers and uh, what uh, the Mount St. Joseph Lions can do to, to claw their way back into this second set uh, second game for the Lions and the second game for the Knights on the afternoon in this really fun triple header afternoon. And we are back for the third game of this match between the Southern Virginia University men's volleyball team. The Knights winning the first two games of the match. And the Mount St. Joseph Lions in a bit of a deficit here. Looking over the, the stats on the two games, the Knights winning the first match, uh, sorry, the first game pretty handily. Um, but it felt like St. Joseph was in the second one a little bit more. They hit a little bit better, hit 250 overall for that one. Um, but uh, the Knights hitting 435 in the first game and then 471 
in the second. Yeah, 450 on the day for the Knights. Definitely, you know, in control and kind of doing, you know, what they want. Uh, definitely need to limit some of the errors that they had. Um, they actually lead uh, in service errors 12 to 11, so both teams could, you know, do good from limiting those uh, service errors. But uh, for the Knights, you know, been playing pretty well. No blocking or, you know, not a lot of reception errors. So Knights just need to continue to be smart and uh, finish this, you know, finish this third one. Yeah, the Knights with uh, five total blocks uh, to the one of Mount St. Joseph's. Big difference here. Christian Schaefer gets the ball over to Hasher. They go back to him, and great dig from the back row. Rock Baron forced to put it over. And they're going to go back to Hasher. Tagaloa was there. He saw a line open. Hasher went line, but Rock Baron unable to keep the ball alive. And it'll be a 1-1 game. Yeah, great effort right there from Kaipo. You know, not a lot could have done in that circumstance. We see another service error, but, um, you know, good effort right there from Kaipo to go defend that. Who, you know, he's definitely going to have to do that going forward this season and just be able to defend and, as well as, you know, continue to assist and set. Yeah, Coach Neheisel over there off that uh, service error was just kind of like, man, <laughs> from his knees, Cable puts it over free – Ball for the Knights, opposite to Kyler Evans. Great dig from the back row, and then again off the block. That time it's Sanchez keeping this game tied at two. Great defense and then transition offense for the Lions. The back line doing its job. Eli Scott with the big jump serve that falls well short. Yeah, back-to-back -back errors right there um, on serves, keeping the Knights in it. Kaipo Tongaloa really mishit that one. And then Jason Hasher. It's his chance. He, he just looked over at Coach uh, at his bench. He was like, maybe I should just do an underhand serve. He does what it takes to get it over. And Kaipo putting that one pretty tight off the block. That was a good job from Justin Madsen just to get that ball, put it up. Kaipo falling away a little bit, maybe a little tight uh, to the net, but Kyler Evans able to swing hard and put the ball off the block. And Knights up by one with Rocka Baron. Right-handed serve. Took a little bit off it, trying to make sure it stayed in. And then they're going to call the block, puts the ball off the antenna. And Sanchez did a great job. He was falling out of bounds. He had no real hope right there. Tried to put it cross court, just anything he'd do to keep it in. And the block, which was a little awkward, ends up putting that ball off of the antenna. And then the pass from Madsen, not happy with himself, puts that ball in a jousting position at the net and it's right back down in the knight's face and that gives the lions a one point lead i believe that's the first time the lions have led you know tonight and we you know we see bullhauer getting his fourth kill right now who's and he's hidden at 80 percent right now as the knight's able to tie it back up but just you know credit to ryan for you know like when he when he takes the shots you know he's, he's taking shot smart shots excuse me he's 80 percent on four kills today yeah. Hitting 351 on the year, the kind of the best percentage hitter uh, for the Lions. 77 attacks, 38 kills. And now Cristo Puente goes to the other side. We'll see if this makes a nice job getting it over. Hasher with a great dig. And I don't think that ball ever made it over from, from Bullhauer. Talking, he looks at it, hit the ball on his palm, can't really get it over. That was a much better serve from Cristo. Maybe the right side is his friend. Um, or not? Yeah, we've seen him. We have seen him knock down a couple, you know, good ones. Just can't, you know, can't find his sweet spot and stay consistent. And uh, thirteen server errors now for the Knights. And Bullhauer again. That's the second time we've seen. A poor Knights serve and then a poor Lions serve. And for the Lions, 
to extend this match beyond a third game, they're going to need to be consistent on the service line. Let the Knights make service errors. Be consistent on your side. Play defense. Tyler Schaefer gets that one in. The back line play really catches the Knights. They were early on the jump, coming over the top. Jason uh, Hasher, so good coming from the back line. Big swing. And that one, as Matson goes up, says psych and lets it go between his hands. Carmesino puts it long, gives the Knights a point. Yeah, heads up play right there from Matson. I think everybody in the gym thought he was going to go for that one right there, but smart play to let that one go out and you know retake the lead. Kindlin, Mr. Consistency at the line. The play from Hasher, great job. He really connects well with Carmesino. I know that, I mean, just watching the freshman, he loves serving Hasher. And they're in that situation where you might also might see, watch out uh, for some play from Eli Scott. Combo play. This one goes up by Carmesino. And Cable doesn't really get that ball in a good spot off of the bump set. Disappointed with himself. It's a tough play for the senior. Yeah, we saw McKay Walker have some success serving, you know, earlier in this game. Uh, the development of, of Walker, you know, has been something to watch for the Knights fans. It's a smart play to let that one go it was Walker. Carmesino had Eli Scott wrapping around, and, and Carmesino right now looked at him. I was like, hey, I should have gone that direction. I think you go to that well as often as you can. And there it is. Knights are able to get the tip. Hasher back and forth. And the hit from Baldwin is able to catch the bottom court. And the Knights now up by three. Good transition offense from the Knights. Hasher tried to salt it away with a quick one. Knight's able to keep it alive and then finish from the Schaefer-Baldwin combination. In for the Knights, Christian Schaefer as well. Tyler Schaefer, Noel Rock Baron, Cristo Puente, Chip Baldwin, and then serving McKay Walker. Sneaks it over the net. Outside. Not able to finish the Sanchez, and Schaefer just puts it, tries to put it back in that deep left corner, and it goes long. Exactly what the Lions needed. Get back on serve, down two with Eli Scott serving. Rock of Baron with great handles, and then back to him, and that is how you play volleyball in really aggressive fashion. Great job getting the dig and then just attacking the net and perfectly placed for him to get up and put it down by Tyler Schaefer. I got to tell you, it is impressive to watch somebody do such an athletic feat so casually. He gets up smiling, high five, and just what a play right there, able to fly above the rim, you know, excuse me, the net and, and send that one down just so casually and it's just because it's everyday things for now. While he's been doing this for years, as Knight fans know. But good little rally here. Both teams going back and forth. The block that Cristo gets to, unable to put it down. It goes out of bounds. And the Lions will go back, looking for point number 11. Down by two. Hasher on the serve. And that one well long. We've seen some questionable serves from both sides of the net. Rock of Baron goes up, puts it into Cable. Cable handles it. Kaipo goes opposite to, Shafe, uh, to Evans. Evans can't finish. Kaipo playing the ball. Off of the hit from Wood. This ball's ping pong all over the place. Still in. And we are going to keep playing transition volleyball. 
Karasimo not able to finish. The Knights fans trying to rally the Knights, and that block keeps the ball on the side of the Lions. That was by far the longest rally we've had all night. That's a fun. That's some fun volleyball to watch, Skyler. Oh, absolutely. You know, just plays from both teams all over. People diving. We saw a great play right there from Kaipo that eventually ended on the point. But uh, you know, what a rally right there. And those are important. Uh, to win as we see another service error right here from the Knights but those are important to win you know in those you know those heated back and forths when the games are close as we see here the Knights you know looking to win you know their third and final set but you know the Lions sticking right with them and you know playing you know up to the competition of the Knights which is great to see. Uh, a little bit off on the timing there <laughs> and the ball is just banging around in about a four foot square eventually ends up uh, being play being made by the Lions. Yeah, you'd love to see Kaipo maybe reverse that, but uh, he was trying to set up Evans um, and just a couple different attempts, a couple different looks, but not a lot of distance. Oh, Kaipo having that ball slip between his hands. We see that almost never. Dries his hands off. Now within a point, Sanchez on the serve. Great pass, the quick to Cristo. Kaipo checking what's around him. And then Bullhauer in a critical moment, unable to finish, not happy with himself. He saw eyes real wide. There wasn't a block up, and he put the ball in the net. Yeah, it's tough timing right there. Could have got the Knights sleeping right there and brought it within one. But Knights able to go up two here and uh, get the serve. Puente gets the serve in. Carcimo goes outside, and Wood hammers it home. Yeah, we've seen Hayden Wood, you know, throw down a couple right there. That was his fourth kill. He's also had seven digs on the day. He's, you know, he's playing pretty well, you know, across the board for the Lions. As the Lions are now, you know, looking to tie it up here. Yeah, hitting as I mentioned, 120 on the season. Rock Baron goes long, no block in front of him. And not able to get the ball down as the Lions tie it up with Bullhauer at the line. Serving for the lead. Great job from the Lions to keep in the fight. Good passing. And then back to Rocka Baron. Jason Hasher. Don't think he stood a chance right there. That quick bang bang play to Rocka Baron from the back line is really hard to defend. Rocka Baron's hard to defend regardless, and now that he's expanding what he can do, you know, into that back line, and, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's just such a weapon for this Knights team, especially with all the different outside hitters, having him being able to, you know, you know, play a lot of defense and then able to go to that back row as well as, you know, it's, it's quite nice for the Knights. Block goes up, gives a second opportunity. Kersimo puts it up to Hasher, and he is blocked pretty cleanly. Carmesino doing a good job moving his feet, trying to get an opportunity for his team. The passing kind of making life difficult for him right now. Carmesino very athletic, getting to the ball. The Really only one choice for him to go to right there, and the double block was there. This time he goes middle to Wood, and the Knights block it. McKay did a great job on the solo block against Eli Scott. Have not seen Scott block like that all day long yeah that's the defense of McKay you know he brings in you know, he's that that height as well and the athleticism behind it it's it's a great play as we go into a break right here the Knights leading you know up to yeah the timeout called by coach knee uh, Heisel smart play feeling a little bit of that momentum maybe his felt like his team was tired when you're only playing eight and really, they've kind of shortened that play to, to really seven. Um, they get tired pretty quick, so he's using his timeouts, not just to curb the momentum, but to allow some water and uh, get his players some rest. Yeah, long drive home. Uh, you know, great competition out here at the barn. And, uh, you know, it's now or never for the Lions, you know, to get, to get a set. And we would love to, you know, to get a set here on the Knights. And uh, if you're the Knights looking to close out here and just – Limit the mistakes that you've been making, and you know, from the serves, and uh, try to go from there. 
The Knights hitting down now to 322. This is the, their worst hitting of the afternoon. They're hitting 0-5-3 with uh, four kills on 19 attacks. Uh, this set, the Lions are hitting 0-3-8 with eight kills on 26 attacks. So offense not really on display at the moment. And I don't think I'd put a lot of it due to um, the the blocking, really, I, I think there's some pretty good defense being played from the back line and, and getting to balls. The Knights have picked up their blocking relative to the previous two sets, however. So nice swing from Wood. Opportunity for Kaipo. He puts it in the middle to Rocka Baron, and Rocka Baron finishes. That was a really great display of the transition offense of the Knights when they can get to balls on the back line and Kaipo can put the ball almost anywhere on the court when he can get it, get to it, which he's really good with his feet. Yeah, you said it. What an assist right there from Kaipo. But before that, the block from Evans that really set it up was, you know, was, was impressive. And he's, he's done that a couple different times, and that's what set up now well to get that kill. And another one right there from McKay who's fired up getting that 20th point there. Yeah, Walker putting the ball off the hands of Sanchez. The Knights pulled away, and, and Coach Nihai Heisel could, could feel it. You know, he took that time out at 18-16. Now it's 2016. Knights' most consistent server, Paul Candelin, into Sanchez, and Hasher on the outside doesn't finish. Knights also struggling to finish, and then Cable can't put the easy ball over. You know, I think that's a little bit of a consequence, really, of where he's at. Like, in, a, in, a, in maybe in a different gym, he'll put that ball higher. He's just worried about the barn here, and, and the ball can't go off the roof to the Knights' side. So he's trying to be a little tight with that, and it just ends up going in the net on him. Yeah, definitely the roof definitely here in the barn does play a factor, as we've seen it getting involved, you know, a couple times. Hard not to comment on it, but it's just something that these – you know, these Knights players are used to, and it's the teams have to adapt as they, you know, as they get playing here. See that one go out. Yeah, Jason Hasher just throwing his hands down. You kind of see in the body language he's frustrated. He wants to be able to do more. Body's letting him down a little bit. The swing betrays him. Keeps playing with that right arm band that he has on. There's a great pass. The quick to Scott doesn't pan out. And then the quick to Walker, same thing. And they're going to call a violation. I think they're in the net. That will be the Knights' 23rd point, two away from getting two 3-0 matches on this beautiful Friday afternoon. Uh, Saturday, Saturday afternoon, my fault. It's been, it's been a long day for me. Uh, yeah, I can Skyler. imagine. A lot of fun, though. Hasher purposely swiping at that ball to get it off the block. Very smart. That's a graduate uh, player right there. As I mentioned, he's a graduate student from Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, no, sorry. Um, Hasher from uh, uh, Miamisburg, Ohio, uh, Alter High School. And trying to keep the ball alive any way possible is Madsen. Can't do it. So now it's a five-point lead for the Knights. And Hayden Wood will continue serving. Yeah, the Lions, you know, definitely not you know, letting the Knights win easy here. Rallying here just down a couple. Schaefer puts a nice pass to Tangaloa, which allows him to give the ball back row to Evans and, and Kyler Evans does his job. You can really see him swing, put a little extra vitriol into that swing, really wanted to pound at home, knowing that he only had a single block in front of him. Now the Knights on set uh, point and also match point as Sam Durkin comes in wanting to finish out with an ace. You know, it's, uh, the, the, these are young men that love the idea, right, of kind of finishing. It's like finishing with a dunk, right? And, and that's what they want to do. 
But uh, it just didn't work out for him. Comes off, headband and all. And Kaipo can't get to that one off the pass. Now four point deficit. One of the best servers on the Lions team, Eli Scott. He'll get his jump serve going. Better pass from Christian and the miscommunication. And the joust at the net. Two players kind of going up, trying to figure out what was going on as there's going to be a conversation between the down ref and the up ref. Really centering around that uh, joust at the net is was somebody over because it looks like the ball was on the night side. That's what happened. So the ball was still not over the net. You, you know, if it's, you, you can't go up and interfere with the ball when it's still on the other team's side of the net, and that's what happened. Just a little bit aggressive on that joust and ends up being a point for the Knights, and they finish out 25-20. A little anticlimactic. Would have been nicer for uh, Sam Durkin to, uh, for him to finish that out. As it is, you take a win. And you move on. Uh, Skyler looking at the numbers. Um, Knights kind of dominating for, for most of this set. Uh, there were some moments where you really saw athleticism and, and skill on display for these Lions, but the Knights went out in straight sets. Yeah, absolutely. You know, props to the Lions who you know, definitely you know, played hard. You know, basically three identical sets and able to get one more point in each of them, 18, 19, and 20 in that last one. Um, put up a fight, but yeah, the depth of the Knights definitely on display. Going forward for this Knights team, just need to limit those errors that they're, you know, consistently seeing, you know, on the services. They ended with 17 points, you know, awarded on errors, and that's that's tough right there. But the Knights, you know, had command. Uh, Noel ended with 11 kills on a 455 percentage. Probably won't be too happy about the percentage number, but happy about the wins and uh, looking forward to continue to building. And yeah, looking forward to this great, you know, SVU uh, volleyball season. Yeah, no, uh, 11 kills, one error uh, for, for Rocker Baron. Fantastic, 455. McKay Walker, six attacks, no errors, hitting 750, which from that middle, I mean, this is fantastic from Walker. Evans um, hitting 231. Baldwin, who was phenomenal, 917 in the first match, hitting 600. So overall, really great consistency across the board for the Knights. Um, players uh, were able to get in in the first match. Knights really doing what they wanted to do through both matches. Now it's time, as you said, to go back uh, for Coach Peterson and get ready for more CVC conference play, which there's some really great teams ahead for the Knights. Um, just a real quick, uh, when you look at the schedule, uh, the, the Knights will be on Thursday at Randolph-Macon, and they go really for the rest of the month they're away and they don't get their next home game until March 4th. But then there's going to be like six straight home games. So keep your eye on the Knights on these away. Don't, uh, don't forget about them. Make sure you check out the Knights Instagram. Kiwi Jero and his team doing a fantastic job. Catch, uh, catch us again on March 4th at 7 p.m. And uh, good luck and safe travels to the Mount St. Mary Lions, the Immaculata Mighty Max, uh, hopefully they get home safely and, and good luck for them in the rest of their season. Have a great evening. God bless. And go Knights.